Now you've had some time to practice adding clips to your timeline in a variety of ways. You're probably intrigued to find out what all of the numbers, lines and icons on your timeline are all about. So let's take a look at some of those together. Please grab your mobile device, open your projects with me and let's dive into the timeline. After all, it's where you're going to be spending the majority of time in your edit. Here you can see I have my timeline with three clips placed one after the other on the main track. As I drag my finger on the timeline, you can see I can easily scrub through the content, viewing the footage up in the preview. The frame I see here is determined by the position of the playhead, which is this blue vertical line. The playhead always stays still. It's the timeline underneath that moves. You can see this when I press play. Watch how we can view the action up here in the preview. And when I pause the video, the frame we see is the frame under the playhead. This ruler at the bottom of your timeline displays the time code of the project, indicating increments of time in hours, minutes, seconds and frames. It'll help you see where you're at in your project, note what time certain clips play out and how long your overall edit is. How much detail you see on the ruler depends on how far zoomed in or out you are on your timeline. Pinch on the timeline with two fingers to zoom the timeline in and out. When you zoom all the way in as far as you can, you'll notice the playhead turns white. This tells us it's covering a single frame of your project, meaning you can't go any further, but also enables you to make really specific edits frame by frame. These shorter white lines on the ruler are single frame increments and can only be seen when you're zoomed in and up close and personal with your footage. So the more zoomed in you are, the more accurate you can be when editing frame by frame. Zooming in and out can also be useful when you're adding or removing content on your timeline. After all, it's going to make your life easier if you can clearly see the area you want to place your clip. For example, let's say I want to put another clip after this one here. If I'm too zoomed into the timeline, I'll have to drag my chosen new clip around until I find the desired area to drop it. This is okay with a very short project, but it will soon get tiresome when there are lots of clips on the timeline. If on the other hand you have a really busy timeline, you might need to zoom in to see where to slot your clip. When you get started with LumaFusion, you'll notice when you're adding clips that they stick together with no blank spaces in between them. They even move out of the way for each other. That's because LumaFusion enables you to edit on a magnetic timeline, so it's really easy to add or delete clips at any stage of the edit. You can turn this magnetic timeline on and off by changing from insert to overwrite mode here in the track header menu, a feature we'll explain in depth in another video. For now, take the time to play around with the navigation of the timeline. You can't break anything, I promise. It's just so important to start exploring these features so you can really get to grips with how they work as they'll play a huge role in your editing workflow as time goes on.